Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for waiting. Welcome to the American Foundation for Equal Rights Conference Call. All lines have been placed on listen-only mode, and the floor will be open for your questions and comments following the presentation. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to turn the floor over to your host, Mr. Chad Griffin, Board President. Mr. Griffin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and thanks to all of you um, for calling. We have a, a very full call, so we're going to be brief and then move uh, to your questions. Um, I first want to congratulate uh, the tremendous legal team that AFER put together um, for this case, and particularly uh, Theodore Boutrous, um, Ted Boutrous, who is on the call and is going to be speaking shortly, argued the case um, yesterday uh, before Chief Judge Ware um, and our two legal teams of Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher and Boyd Schiller and Flexner did a tremendous job yet again uh, bringing about uh, a deserved victory. Um, as I said yesterday, it, it was my belief that uh, the, the defendant intervenors bigoted and homophobic motion will, will prove to be a real low point in the struggle for, for civil rights and full equality for gay and lesbian people. Um, but today, um, truly turned out to be a, a turning point, um, and this incredibly, and str sorry, this strongly worded opinion uh, by Chief Judge Ware um, will be precedent setting and, and truly advances equal rights and equal treatment um, for all Americans, including gay and lesbians. Um, and with that, I will turn the phone over um, to the gentleman that I just congratulated on, on this victory, and that's uh, Theodore Boutrous. Go ahead, Ted. Thank, thank you very much, Chad. Hello, everyone. This is a, a powerful ruling that makes clear that gay and lesbian judges are entitled to the same presumptions of fairness and impartiality as all other federal judges, and that rejects the false and unreasonable assumptions and stereotypes that Proposition 8's proponents asserted in what I think really was a deeply offensive motion to begin with. I was very pleased to see that Chief Judge Ware talked about how the fact that, um, this is on page eight, the fact that when there's a question of equal protection and fairness in society, that's an interest that all citizens have the same uh, stake in. It's not just this case, the Perry case, is not just about uh, equal rights for gay men and lesbians, it's for equality in society, which benefits everyone in society. I thought that was particularly strong thing for the judge to say, and, and, it's, and it's true. The, the court also focused on the fact that the proponents were really asking to put these, what the court called inordinate burdens on minority judges with these disclosure re requirements and, and the intrusiveness that, that I talked about yesterday. And then um, on pages 18 and 19, the court talks about the, the, how important it is to the integrity of the judiciary to reject the arguments that the proponents made here. And finally, on the next page, on page 19, the last paragraph, Chief Judge Ware talked about how the proponents' motion really was based on presumptions that, in his words, all people in same-sex relationships think alike, and the notion that um, Chief Judge Walker or another gay judge couldn't put their personal status to the side and be fair is wrong. So I think th this, this opinion is going to be in line with those decisions in the areas of gender, race, ethnicity, religious background um, that people will cite for many, many years uh, in, in, in saying that gay judges, lesbian judges are entitled to the same fairness, uh, fairness and impartiality presumptions as all other judges, and that's a great development for society. With, thank you, Ted. And with that, we'll um, open up, operator, to, uh, to questions. Certainly. The floor is now open for questions. If you do have a question, please press the number 7 or the letter Q on your telephone keypad. Questions will be taken in the order that they were received. If at any point your question has been answered, you may press 7 or Q again to disable your request. If you are using a speakerphone, we ask that while posing your question, you pick up your handset to provide favorable sound quality. Please hold while we wait for the first question. First question comes from Karen O'Cam. Karen, please state your question. Uh, hi, thanks, Ted. Hi, Chad. 
Um, do you think this ruling will have any impact on the California Supreme Court's uh, uh, op- opinion uh, on standing? Uh, Karen, I I think that again, just sort of from an, um, the, the circumstances surrounding this case, um, I don't think that the proponents' filing of this motion helped their their situation. Now, what, from a legal standpoint, you know, this dealt with a completely different issue than their standing question. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but for them, I, I just thought for them to come in and file this motion, um, that when when their their standing and their status to participate in the case is highly questionable at this point to begin with, it certainly doesn't, if, if you know, help the 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 notion that they should be participating in the case from a legal standpoint it doesn't directly relate to those issues but certainly um i don't think it help it help it puts them in a very good light as the litigants who should be supporting california's interests in, in supposed interests in in this case when the attorney general and the governor have said that that they 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 will stand by the decision that chief judge walker made The next question comes from Laura Earned. Laura, please state your question. Hi, I was wondering if this uh, can be appealed to the Ninth Circuit. Laura, they uh, proponents may try to file a notice of appeal, but I think they will run into some of the same standing problems that they they are confronting on the merits. Because at this point, once they go up on appeal. They're out of a court where there is a an actual government participant in the case. In the district court, there still are because there's an injunction. So any appeal of this order is going to run smack into the same standing issues that the proponents of Proposition 8 confront in the merits litigation. Okay, thank you. Sure. The next question comes from Bobby Yelko. Bob, please state your question. I'm struggling to uh, to figure out exactly what standard he set and you know what he said about uh, you know, whether a judge who intended to marry or who, who who had said publicly that he intended to marry would have a disqualifying conflict or would give an, a, an appearance of bias. It was a little opaque for me. Maybe I just missed something, but uh, he, it seemed like he was saying that there was merely speculation here and that there was no duty to disclose under these circumstances. But I couldn't really tell, you know, what what standards he was he was laying down. And since he said that this is a precedent, can you, you know, maybe uh, decipher some of this? Yeah, I mean, I think Bob he he didn't go in and rule on some of the hypotheticals that that. He was asking me about and that came up yesterday, which is appropriate because federal courts aren't supposed to make advisory opinions on things that aren't present in the case. However, I think he laid down several standards. One, the judge's status here, the judge's sexual orientation, is not a factor that can reasonably viewed as be viewed as calling into question the judge's impartiality. That is an exceedingly important principle. And it, it follows the precedent that has been laid down in other areas, including gender, race, ethnicity, and, and religious background. Second, the court rejected the, these amorphous disclosure requirements that proponents were suggesting that would require a judge in a marriage case, for example, or in other types of cases to take the bench and start disclosing and explaining their their personal background, their their views, their intentions, and and as Judge Walker pointed out, I mean Judge Ware, Chief Judge Ware pointed out, that would really create problems in terms of the integrity of the judiciary, the the trust that we have in judges to do justice by applying the law, and he really talks about that on page 18. Uh, so I think. The, 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 those general principles rejecting this notion that uh, status does bear on impartiality, number one. Number two, 
rejecting the notion that a judge has to get on, has to disclose and dis- disavow things and, and, um, and, and go down that road. Both of those principles are very Im- important. And in addition, Chief Judge Ware made very clear there's a presumption of impartiality. It's not the presumption that the proponents were asking for, which was a presumption of bias. And, and in no case has a court ever held that a federal judge is presumed to be biased unless they declare they're not biased. That, to me, was a special rule that the proponents developed that would apply in cases involving gay and lesbian judges, which obviously is completely inappropriate. Again, if you do have a question, please press 7 or Q on your telephone keypad. Again, that's seven or Q. As as we're waiting for um, for the next question, I think you know as this year has turned out to be historic in terms of LGBT equality, and since the the filing of our case, we now have four national polls that show support for marriage equality over 50 percent. So now a majority of Americans uh, support marriage equality. This week, um, in addition to uh, the historic ruling that came from Chief Judge Ware today, uh, there was a, a decision that that really went unnoticed yesterday uh, in federal bankruptcy court. Um, that I will let um, I will let Ted speak to uh, just briefly and specifically because I think it is an important decision um, that called out DOMA as unconstitutional in which 20 judges of the uh, federal bankruptcy court signed. In addition, um, I know many of you are writing and following the news in New York. Um, the breaking news now is that Cuomo has endorsed the marriage equality, or I'm sorry, introduced the marriage equality bill and. It, it appears as though there's only one uh, vote left to go to push that over. So we're op- obviously optimistic, as, as many of our supporters and donors and AFER members are involved in, in that effort in, in New York. So um, this is, has been a, a big week uh, for full equality. Ted, I don't know if you have anything to say as it relates to that uh, decision that came out late yesterday. To amplify what Chad said, it, it really is another important step in – in the federal courts in terms of momentum, in terms of precedent. The court, for those of you who don't know about it, the bankruptcy judge, judges in the Central District of California found that um, the Constitution precluded application of uh, of DOMA to uh, a, a gay couple in, in, in restricting their ability to find a joint, uh, file a joint petition for bankruptcy. The court relied on Chief Judge Walker's decision on the Gill decision on DOMA uh, that came down uh, several months ago. And in addition to the judge presiding over the case, all 20, I think it's all 20 judges in the bankruptcy court here, signed the, the ruling, which I find, um, again, uh, very powerful, very compelling. So it, this is a very good day for equality for all citizens and in particular, gay men and lesbians in America. Any further questions, operator? It appears we have no further questions at this time. Excellent. Thanks um, to all of you. There were 30-plus folks who had joined this call, and those of you who um, need any follow-up questions, you know how to reach us here uh, in the AFER office, um, and we can put you in touch with any of the – with Ted directly or anyone else you're looking to speak to. Thanks uh, for everyone's uh, time um, on this day and look forward to speaking with you soon as as we near uh, the the final uh, end of Proposition 8 in the months to come. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Pardon the interruption. This is the operator. Uh, a question just came in. Would you like to take it? Okay, Bill, sure. Bill here. <laughs> the next question comes from Morara Dolan. Morara, please state your question. Uh, yeah, hey, I Maura. apologize for coming in late on this. I'm just wondering, can Protect Marriage appeal this decision? What is sort of the legal um, details here in terms of how they would appeal this? Yeah, Maura, I think they could uh, – this is Tad. How are you doing? Mm-hmm. Hi, uh, they, they could. I, I, they could. They could try to appeal. They have a couple of problems. One, once they're up on appeal, they run into the same standing issues that they have with respect to the merits. There's all, someone asked a question about this earlier, and I answered it, and I didn't make this other point. There's also just procedural difficulties because this was in a, a ruling on this motion in this procedural posture where the case is up on appeal. So – 
I think they've got some significant problems here if they if they seek to appeal, and maybe they'll maybe they'll 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 wise up and understand this is a bad a bad road to travel down. Could they just um, reserve the right to bring it up later when all the other procedural issues are resolved, such as standing? I think they'd have to do it under the appellate rules within 30 days of the order, the way you normally would, because okay. the case because of the posture of this rule. So I think they'll they'll have to make their decision now. Although as we saw with this motion, they're they're capable of of lying in wait until it's an opportune time to <laughs> to take action. So, but I think they have to follow the usual rules. And obviously that yeah, go ahead more. The other quick question is, just beyond this case, is this an important precedent in terms of openly gay judge, judges deciding gay cases? I mean, this is apparently the first ruling on this subject, is that correct, on a gay judge deciding a gay rights case? That, that That's correct, Maura. This is, I think, a very important precedent. It is in line with the decisions that came before in other areas, including race, ethnicity, gender, it is a very powerful statement that makes clear that gay men and lesbians are entitled to the same presumptions of fairness and impartiality as all other federal judges. Chief Judge Ware really made a point, too, of talking about how this, the principles that he relies on are principles that are crucial to the independence and integrity of the federal judiciary. The notion that judges can't be attacked, cannot be attacked based on their status, based on their their membership in a minority group has now been reaffirmed in the context of gay and lesbian judges. That is very important. I think people will be citing this decision for many years to come on these issues. And, and more as with respect to what the opponents do, obviously that's a that's a good question um, to be to be posed to them. I think um, after seeing this motion that was filed, that I, I speak for everyone in saying that 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 nothing that they would do would would surprise us at this point. As you know, this was the the second judge in this case that they have attempted uh, to get to uh, recuse himself. So um, we look forward to to how they would respond uh, to all of you on that question. Okay, great. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Maura. Operator, any other questions in the queue? We have another question from Nick Garcia. Nick, please state your question. This is a question I think maybe more for Chad than Ted. But, Chad, you know, we're getting into the height of pride season throughout the nation. Can you kind of put this ruling and the course of AFR into context with pride? Yeah, I mean, look, look. What I what I would say is, you know, Gay Pride Month um, has historic meaning, um, and it, it's a time of the year where uh, gay and lesbian people and their friends and allies uh, celebrate um, who they are, and it has had historical significance. And I think increasingly so, um, it, it it can become a true celebration of full and complete equality under the law. Um, we're not there yet. Um, this past year, and as I had said earlier, since the filing of this case, we now have a majority of Americans supporting marriage equality. We have numerous states across the country uh, who have full federal equality. Hopefully by the end of this week, New York will have marriage equality. We are very close. Prop 8 is hanging by a very thin thread uh, that has unraveled to its core, and um, perhaps within months we will see Prop 8 erased from the book. Our nation's capital now has gay marriage. Uh, the administration and the president uh, has indicated their unwillingness to defend DOMA as constitutional. Um, the decision that, that came yesterday, the end of don't ask, don't tell, um, I think we, are, we, we have had a historic year, and I, it is my hope uh, that a year from now um, and that uh, next Pride, Pride 2012, could be a year that we just might be able to celebrate full federal equality uh, under the law, and, and that would be a tremendous celebration and per perhaps a, a, a Pride Month unlike uh, we've ever seen before. You know, I just a quick follow-up. I was reading uh, a couple of posts around, around the Internet that said, we actually might not get a full decision on Prop 8 all the way to the Supreme Court until 2013. Are you guys thinking differently now? 
Um, the, the, we we have always been optimistic. I mean, if you look at this case, this this it, it hasn't even been a year um, since we won the case. Um, the case and the trial, the federal judge expedited um, the the trial. Uh, we had a decision that will be a year in August. Uh, we won, as everyone on this call knows, in a sweeping historic uh, decision that Prop 8 is is unconstitutional. Um, our court system, as we all know, allows for the losing party um, when they have standing to appeal. Um, the uh, defendants, the official defendants in this case, the governor and the attorney general, uh, agreed with the decision and decided not to appeal. The Ninth Circuit expedited the appeal. We have already been to the Ninth Circuit and had oral arguments. They have referred a very technical question with regards to standing to the California Supreme Court. That court has indicated um, that in September they will hear, hear those arguments, and due to the fact that it is a very simple and direct and uncomplicated legal matter, it's our belief that and, and hope that they will act quite quickly uh, and and give their answer to the Ninth Circuit and that we would move um, very quickly. So it's it's our hope and belief that, that we're looking at, uh, that, that we are months away uh, from seeing Prop 8 um, and Judge Walker's decision uh, realized and, and that all Californians will, will have the ability to, to marry. Thank you. Well, any, please, other, <laughs> any other question, operator? We have a question from Ian Levet. Ian, please state your question. Um, hi, I'm just wondering if we can clarify that this is um, definitely the first ruling directly on gay judges ruling on gay cases. It's, uh, this is Ted Boutrous. As far as we know, as far as the judge, uh, the judge had the same uh, assessment and of the other side as well. It is the first first time this issue has been decided uh, in the in the federal court system for sure. Okay, great. And it's you know it's, I think that that's important because in literally every historic civil rights battle. It, it, we've had in this country, this issue has come up where the, those who are seeking to stop equality try to disqualify a judge from the group whose rights are at stake in the case. And the courts keep saying, absolutely not. We trust our judges to be fair and impartial. And that's what Chief Judge Ware found here. Okay. Great. Thank you. You bet. Any other questions, operator? No questions at this time. Okay. Thank, thanks, everyone, for your time uh, on this important matter, and you know how to reach us if you have any follow-up questions. And thanks um, again, and congratulations to Ted Butris and the tremendous uh, legal team that AFER has put together on this on this effort. Congratulations, and thanks to everyone for your time. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. Thank you. This does conclude today's teleconference. We thank you for your participation. You may disconnect your line at this time. Thank you.